Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, Design Engineer YouTube channel. Uh, in this uh, lab, lab number two, we will cover the one of the labs of the 15 labs I used. I use them for teaching my class and uh, teaching solid edge. Uh, in this lab, lab number two, as you can see, I'm going to try to draw this link and it has what? It has a, this is the isometric view, this is a top view, this is a front view, and this is the right side view. Okay. If I want to start the drawings, the best way to start is to look at the, the view or start from the plane that has the most uh, dimensions in a way that if I draw a sketch, I can't uh, easily create the, the, the shape so if you look carefully here to this uh, draw to this projections you find that the top view which is this one here has the most feature in a way that if I draw this sketch the next step is just to go back to the uh, extrusion command and just extrude every item here in this in this shape into whatever the inside will be five millimeter the outside will be 10 millimeter and the cylinder at the on the right side 15 and uh, the other one uh, is 20. so this way if i can draw this sketch i can do extrusion symmetrical extrusion i will get easy easily to finish the drawing in a very quick and very efficient way okay so without a further ado let's go to solid edge dimensions are in millimeter so we will use nc metric so here is solid edge and we are in nc metric uh, uh, features uh, so let's start by the draw okay now when you uh, when you start the drawing here is my request to you we need to uh, to to start the sketch on the top plane so the first uh, thing you need to do is I need to lock myself to this uh, top plane so the way to do it is to start first I'm going to choose one of the drawing tool and once you choose one of the drawing tool the project the the, the perpendicular the reference planes will show up here we don't see any reference plane in the middle of the page but when I click say for example the circle by center as you can see now I see what the the, uh, the reference planes so first I'm gonna move my mouse okay let me bring the menu from the other side so the menu came to the other uh, screen so I'm gonna put it to the right here okay it's okay it's fine okay so there is a menu okay and for those who are using uh, old version then 2023 the the menu in the old version up to 2022 the it should be horizontal now in the uh, the version 2023 20, the the command the 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 drawing command are presented in a vertical way in a vertical way okay so now the first let's go to what to the top plane so i'm gonna move my mouse to touch the border of the the, the top plane so once you see the lock you click on the lock so this way you see that in the upper right corner the f3 and the lock means that i am locked to the top plane so now all the next step just i'm going to click on the top plane in the cube here in the lower right corner so i'm going to click on the top plane so now i am in the top plane so we're now going to start now the sketch so uh, actually for this drawing i don't need the the, the corner but i need the the, the plane the for the extrusion for the thing but now that's fine so now what i'm going to do i'm going to start with the dimension i'm going to put the dimension now so i'm going to put that the first diameter is a bigger diameter is 50 i'm going to put 50 and i can put it here in the middle in the center i'm going to click okay now i'm going to go to another the other diameter is 25 the inside diameter 25 and I'm gonna highlight this one and put it inside and also I would like to keep the relationship so what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna click on the concentric although I'm sure that I did it right but I'm gonna just to make sure that I wanted this one to be concentric with the other one okay so now they are concentric 
Now I'm going to use the the pen command to just to move it to the right. And here is how how you do the the, the other two circles. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on circle by center. The menu will okay, will will come, and then the first diameter is thirty. I'm going to put thirty. And the way to do it is I need it to be on the same center line of the the, the other circle. How do you know if they are in the same center line or not? Is when you go up and down, when you see the dashed dotted uh, uh, red line, this means what? You are exactly on the same center line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click now. Now go to again, get the other diameter, diameter which will be 15. I'm going to put 15. And then go to highlight the circle here. And then go to the center. When you see the concentric relationship, I'm going to click. So this means that I draw both circle P concentric. To be in the safe side, just I'm going to say what? Concentric and make this one concentric with this one. Okay, so now you see the relationship. Okay, okay. The, now let me lock the dimension now. So I know that this dimension should be 50. So it is 50. And this dimension should be 25. It is 25. This dimension is 30. And this dimension should be what? 50. Okay. The distance between, distance between, you get it from what? From the distance x. I'm going to click on this distance x under dimension, distance x. And it should be horizontal vertical. So it's not by two points. It's going to be by what? Horizontal vertical. Okay. Horizontal vertical. And then the way to do it is you click at any point on the circle and any point in the other circle. He will give you a distance between the two centers. So I'm going to put it somewhere here. So tell me now, I need it to be what? 120. I'm going to put 120. And so now because I locked everything together and I, I confirmed the dimension, everything will move and it will maintain the actual dimension. Don't forget to do that. Because if you didn't uh, put the dimension, he's going to reduce the dimension by the same scale you are moving to the other location. Okay, means that if you reduce it by 20%, means that all the dimension will be reduced 20%. This is just the default in solid edge. And some people sometimes you have hard time understanding that, but it's okay. Okay, now <coughs> I'm going to get the, the line, click on the line, and I need to get the tangent from this circle to the other circle. And the way to do it just to choose any random point, but don't choose uh, any feature point. Feature point means that a, a very top at the top or the point at the horizontal line or and so on. Any point on the vertical or the horizontal. So I'm going to choose any random point and then it should move with me. It didn't move with me. It means that uh, this is not the right point. So now I'm going to go to any point here, somewhere here. Now it is moving with me. Okay. So I want to move with me and then I will go to the other circle here and when I come closer, when I see the two symbols, the symbol that the line is tangent to the circle and it is touching to the circle, so I'm going to click. Once you click, right click to get out and then escape. And this you will see what? At the point of intersection, you will see a circle with an X and a circle with an X. If you see circle with an X and circle, that means that you did it correct. You did it right. Okay. So let's do the other side. Okay, so again, line again. I'm going to click on the point. And then you go back here. When you see the two symbols, you click. Right click to get out. And now escape. And you'll see the same thing. I have a circle with an X, a circle with an X. Uh, how to fix that? If you, did it, you didn't see that, uh, I, I refer you to go back to the... Uh, introduction to solid edge part A and B. Okay, so just watch that. It will show you that how if you get the line incorrect, then how you fix it. Okay, so now let me go to escape here now. Okay, now the first another thing also I need to do is we need to do if you look at the, the, the drawing, I need to do this uh, contour here offset of the same shape here 
but it is inside by how much? By five, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is, this is can be done just easily, but the problem is, I'm gonna explain it to you. If you, 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 you click to, to get an offset, to do that, the computer will confuse, or you want the offset of the inside circle, the inside shape here, or the outside shape, okay? So the best way to, to not to confuse the computer, so what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna use the trim and get rid of this one and get rid of this one okay 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 now so let's go to the uh, go back and before i forget since we are in the same plane and i'm gonna need to draw this because now i created a shape already here which is a shape I'm gonna as a as a as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a closed loop. Let me call it a closed loop. Okay. So I can go back again and get the circle by center, and I need what this fifty back. So I will have the circle by itself, and I have also like half a circle here, which is attached to the other drawing here. So what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna highlight this one. Make sure that both are in the same circle, or it's gonna be it's gonna be in the same circle. And the other one is what is thirty. I'm gonna put thirty. Then we'll go back again to the same center. Uh, let me highlight this one so I can come to it. Okay, that's good. Now the the next step is I need to go to home. Once I get home, oh, oh, I didn't do the first. So let me go back again to the top. Okay. So I need to do what? The offset. So I'm going to click on the offset. And then the menu will come. Okay, here it is. Okay, so now. Okay. I need an offset for what? For this closed loop. You see, it became green. And the way it looks, or the computer recognizes it because he used the shortest way to make the shape. Okay, so I'm going to say accept, and the distance I'm going to say five. It still remember the last time I used an offset, it was five. So I'm going to say accept. Once you say accept, if you go inside, it will draw a similar shape inside by just offset by five millimeter. Or if you go outside, it will make the offset outside. So I need it inside, so I'm going to click inside and then right click to get out, okay. So I was able to create also the offset inside the shape, okay. Uh, the draw, the sketch. So I'm gonna, now there is, the next step is I need to go to home and start doing the extrusion and we'll do it one by one. So now the next first, I'm gonna click on the extrusion and I need what, face, face is fine. So I'm gonna say face and the, you see symmetric is highlighted, means that the shape is gonna come symmetric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the inside here and you go in the arrow, click on the arrow, doesn't matter which arrow up or down because it's going to be symmetric. So I need this one to be five millimeter. I'm going to click enter. Notice something here. Before I do that, let me show you what before I do. We used to have the shape or the, 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 the shape inside shape here. But now it disappeared with the extrusion. So, but it's still I need the shape out, the, ins, the outside shape for this part because it's going to be the inside the inside shape for the outside one. So the, otherwise, if you're going to try to extrude, the other one is going to extrude everything, including the inside. So well, how you do? How you fix that? You go to you see here under use the sketch. Click on the, in the arrow here. It will open the sketch. Right click on the sketch used under use the sketches. Right click on this one, you will see the word restore. So I'm going to say restore that. Uh, that sorry, see here, restore the, the sketch. So when you click on restore the sketch, then it will bring back the same sketch we used for the extrusion before. Okay, so this way I can go back again and do what click on the area here and the click on the arrow. Since it is selected, the arrow is select automatically when you click an area, as a, then it will automatically give you the extrusion. So I'm going to click on this arrow, 
doesn't matter the arrow on the top or the bottom so now it's going to be extrude what the outside sketch the outside lines and the inside lines so i'm going to say okay i need this one how much it's going to be 10. so i'm going to put 10 millimeter enter so now i was able to get the extrusion of the outside now the rest next step is to do the extrusion for the right cylinder and the left cylinder so i'm going to click on the right cylinder here click on the arrow again then it's going to go both ways see because it's a symmetry and this should be 15 i'm going to put 15 and then go to the other side here click on the arrow and this will bring up to what i'm going to put 20. And notice something here just i did all the extrusion without the need to open the extrude command I did it just using what the select command just the arrow select that's it automatically the computer will understand that I need to do extrusion and so on when you click on the on the surface okay and since it is, is a face some kind of it's a face okay you need to do that okay the next step just I'm gonna just give it a fancy look when I do the, the draft sheet which is the second part of this video so I'm gonna just go use video and go to part painter and choose that this part made of chrome chrome so you have a choices here so whatever color you have or whatever material you want to use silver or gold or uh, brass or aluminum or so on. but i prefer chrome chrome is very shiny so i'm going to say apply chrome so once i choose chrome you click on the cell part here it will becomes a chrome part so now the next step is just i'm going to just modify this the thing to look very nice and the smooth curves so we go to file i'm gonna show you something here file and under setting file setting option the menu it will come just to bring it from the other side of the, the other uh, the other screen uh, <clears throat> under view you see arc smoothness actually if you look carefully here see the arc here the circle is not uh, that good smooth circle here so I'm going to say arc smooth and increase it from 3 I'm going to make it 10 and say ok once you say ok man look very nice circle so on. everything is very nice all the curves will be very nice so now the next step is to save this file as what I'm going to save it as save as so let me save it there. and this is lab number two the updated one is different from the old one okay so lab one not too updated okay lab two okay here is lab two updated okay lab two updated so you can save it under that or save it whatever you want to save it under your case and I just I'm going to save because I save it already uh, okay save okay let me save okay I'm going to say save, save the next step is how to create the draft sheet let me go to home back again okay how to create a draft sheet so to create the draft sheet mainly is you need to follow the, these the following steps so you click on file I'm going to say new new again and what you're going to see i'm going to see what the many the table that show you that what are what template you want to use okay for us who are living in the united states of america the the standard paper when you print anything it comes on <coughs> the inch standard so this way when i I want the student to do the things then that is why I'm asking them always when you do the the draft sheet use what NC inch instead of NC metric so I'm going to use NC inch always for my draft sheet so I'm going to click on NC inch and then after that click on NC inch what draft so I'm going to it this way I'm going to say okay and this way it will give me a, a, a paper that 
it has a st American standard. But how can I choose the different type of the paper? If you look in the uh, lower corner here, there's a sheet one. I'm gonna click on double click on sheet one. When you double click on sheet one, go to the the third tab, which is background. Click on the background and then choose instead of D sheet, choose what? B sheet. I'm gonna choose B sheet and say okay. Now as you see this is the size of the B sheet, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make it fit the whole page. So I'm gonna click on the fit click now it fit it, it fits the uh, whole page here in solid edge the next step I need to bring the drawing so click do you see the view wizard here in the upper uh, upper left uh, side okay so I'm gonna click on view wizard once you click on view wizard it open where you saved the file so just I look for the file I just saved it left to to update it or not to whatever you know. just okay let me use this one okay say open so it will open a menu okay let me bring it from the other side let me bring it from the other side okay also okay let me bring it from the other side oh, okay here it is yeah here it is Okay, so instead of the scale 2 to 1, I'm going to make it 1 to 1 because it looks too big. So now it becomes smaller. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to put it here somewhere here. Okay, that's a good location. That's fine. Then go to the top plane or the top view. I'm going to click here. Then the right uh, view. doesn't matter here because I can move it later. And then I can put the isometric somewhere here. Okay. Now, okay. The next step is just I need to play with the location. It's up how you do it. Now, if I click on this one here, I always like it to have it what? Shade, uh, shade option. I'm going to click on the shade option and choose the last one, grayscale shaded with edge. Once I choose this option, you go back to the drawing, right click. And say what update. When you update it, it will show you where the shiny one with the chrome, the part made of chrome, and so on. Okay. Now, if I now if I let's move to the other. So when I click on the other one, then I can move them up and down, and I can locate them the way I like, and so on. So let me move this one up a little bit. I have room here. Yeah, here it is. Okay, I have enough room. Just this is your drawing and you organize it the way it looks nice okay so now let's the first step we're going to start with the smart dimension so i'm going to go to the circle here okay now notice something we are in the english uh, inch inch and see inch so what i'm going to do because i need to put the dimension in millimeter so what you can do is just once you start the smart dimension go back to the standard here and tell him, okay, for this sheet, I need it to be NC millimeter. And I need the font 1.75 micro. This, you will see how it looks. It looks very nice. Okay, so I'm going to click here in this one here. It tell me this is 50 millimeter. And this one is what? It's 25 millimeter. This circle is 30 millimeter. And this circle is 15 millimeter. What else? This distance, the, the, the height here is 20, and the height here is what is 15. And if I want to get the height by using the smart dimension, what you need to do the height between this line and this line. So you go just don't worry about the number now. Click on the other line, it tell you okay, the height between both of them is what is 10. And they say from the dashed line, I'm gonna click on the first dashed line and click on the other second dashed line. And tell you what this thickness inside is five millimeter for this one what else we have okay let me go back here i'm going to choose the x dimension which is x between to object and make sure that it is horizontal vertical make sure about this horizontal vertical. so horizontal vertical means that from the horizontal from the center of this circle to the center of this curve this should be 20 millimeter 
and from the center of the circle here also you know you yeah, right click get out double click again so from the center of the circle the center of this line this one is 30 meters so this is obvious need that the thickness is 5 mm but sometimes you need to make it visible for some other people just to say okay i need the distance from this line to this line no i, I don't need it vertical horizontal you see the arrow no i need to have it what distance between two points by two point so you click on one here and you click some kind of an angle here and tell you that this contour like is five millimeters so i'm gonna put five millimeter here and this is oh we need to put the name of the lab or the the part here okay we can say okay in my case now i'm gonna call it just lab number two a link or whatever you want to call it link you want to call it lab number two this is this is your choice whatever name you prefer so how to do the, the naming here of the of the of the drawing of the draft sheet you go to under annotation here and you see the a text i'm gonna click on text so it will open a menu what is the menu yeah, it's coming here. So, so we have two menus here. I'm gonna close this one. I don't need this one or anything. Okay, now let's go to this format here. I say okay. No, I'm gonna change the format here. The, the scale here instead of 1.75, I'm gonna use it two. And then the ANSI the thing, and then I'm gonna choose this one bold. And now I choose this one like maybe 0.25 or 0 0.2, 0 0.2, good. Okay. Yeah, it's a try and error. You you try and you find whatever you want to like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just practice it here. I'm going to say this is lab number two. So now you yeah, select, select this one. Let me see the... Okay, just uh, we're gonna put it inside here. Get out. That's fine. So now I name the lab. Now I need to save. Uh, <coughs> I need to save the file. So the draft sheet. So when you say save as, click on save as. Automatically, it will name it the same name of the part. If the part is named lab two updated, it's gonna automatically the draft sheet called lab two auto uh, update. Same name automatically. And you can say save, or you're gonna save in the same over on the other one, or whatever, whatever you prefer, whatever name you want. Okay, so can I say save? And I can say save. Okay, so let's say yes, override it. Okay. Okay, this will end the session for this lab. We cover the lab. We cover how to, the part, how to do the part. And then you save it and then how to do the draft sheet with all the dimension and so on and for those who would like to practice with this lab dimension so on the sheet the with the dimensions will be posted uh, i will provide the link uh, so you can download the draft sheet with the dimension if you would like to practice this lab i wish i, I hope that you like the video and First, I would like to thank you for watching the video and I would love to hear your feedback. And if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel, uh, click the bell and give it a thumb up. Have, have, a, have a wonderful day and see you soon on another video and exercise. Thank you. Bye-bye.